yo, 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 it's your boy Biggie Zay, and you know we back with part two of The Walking Dead. If you guys missed part one of this, I'll make sure to leave a link in the description so you guys can pause this, go check it out, and, you know, come back to this video, you feel me? But if you already know the story, then just buckle up and prepare for the ride, because things really start to get crazy in season two. And just to give you guys a brief summary of what happened in the first part, we're following the story of Rick Grimes, who was hospitalized while being on duty. But then he wakes up to a zombie apocalypse, and he has to find his family, which he eventually does. And him and his new group went to go find answers at the CDC, but ultimately came up short. And now our group is trying to find a place to shelter for the time being. And our group gets held up by this highway roadblock. And as they're trying to move all these cars out the way, they notice a herd of zombies heading straight in their direction. And as they're all hiding, Carol's daughter, Sophia, she gets startled and runs away, and now she's being chased by two walkers. But Rick catches up to her first and leads her to safety, and he tells her to stay here while he tries to lure them away. And I'm not gonna lie, this is why I low-key hate kids, bro, because he tells her to stay here until he gets back. And as soon as this dude leaves, this babe leaves, bro. Like, I'm not even talking like it got dark and she left. Literally, the moment he got out of eyes to you, she left. Like, <laughs> you think it's a fucking game out here, like... <laughs> And now Rick comes back literally not too long after and she's nowhere to be found. And so now Carol is pissed off and she's trying to blame Rick for all this. And now the group spends most of the season looking for Sophia. And at this point, it's already been a couple of days since she's went missing. And so before the group heads out on the road again, Rick, Carl, and Shane head out to try to go find Sophia one last time. And as they're in the woods, they find a deer. And my boy Carl is curious, you know, he ain't never really been up close and personal to wildlife like that. So he's getting a real experience here, you know. This is some good learning for the kids, you know. It's so majestic. And Rick and Shane are just admiring this moment, taking it all in. But then the unexpected happened. They shot my nigga Carl, man. And the man who shot him, Otis, tells him where to go to go find Herschel. And Rick makes it to the farm, and he meets Herschel, and he immediately starts doing surgery on Carl. Now, don't worry, guys. My boy Carl is okay, all right? He survived, you feel me? Now, I want to pause here real quick because I just want to talk about what this season really focuses on. Because last season, it was mainly about Rick trying to find his family. But now this season is really all about Shane, and not in a good way either. We see Shane slowly start to spiral out of control, and he slowly tries to demand power and leadership in not only the group, but Rick's family. He feels like he's entitled to Rick's family because he saved them and kept them safe for all this time while Rick's been in the coma. And also during that time, Shane and Lori became somewhat lovers. What are we talking about today? The bro code. And even Carl started to look up to him as a father. And so when Rick finally did return, all of that was stripped away from Shane. But his feelings remained intact. And if I'm being fair, Lori isn't making this any easier, man. Because one moment she's telling him to stay away from her family. Stay away from Carl. Stay away from Rick. And stay away from her. The next minute, she's trying to cope with him and have sympathy for him and all that. And it's just like, you keep giving this man mixed signals. It's no wonder why he's going crazy. And so this season, we see Shane do a lot of questionable things for the sake of the family and the group. And one of the first signs of this is when Shane and Otis have to head out to get meds for Carl. The two got what they needed, but now they're trapped inside this fucking horde of zombies. And both of them are running out of rounds in their guns. And this is when I knew that nigga Shane was a straight Kevin Durant ass nigga, bro. A straight snake. And we see him sacrifice Otis so he can get away. And he tells Herschel and everybody else that Otis died trying to save his life. Now, there's a couple other things that happened during this season. Daryl's on his own little adventure trying to find Sophia and fighting hallucinations of Merle. We see Glenn and Maggie going on supply runs. And I ain't gonna lie, my boy Glenn is straight knocking her boots. And we also find out that Lori is pregnant. Dun, dun, dun. And Rick finds out about this pregnancy because he found abortion pills that she threw up. And he's obviously hurt by this. But to make things even worse, she finally tells him about what her and Shane been doing before Rick got back. And it's hard to say who really is the father of the baby because once Rick did get back, you know he was clapping them cheeks. All right, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But now Rick is trying to convince Herschel to let them stay on the farm. Now I wanna talk about Herschel for a moment, you know, get his character out the way and all that. Herschel, I'm not gonna lie, kinda got like mixed feelings for this dude. Because at first he seems cool, bro. He patches my nigga Carl up, you know, and my dude Carl makes a full recovery. And that's what's up, you know? But after this, he starts acting like a dick, bro. Like this dude Herschel really was on his hating shit, bro. He told Rick once Carl recovers that he and his group needs to leave. All because he notices Glenn macking on his daughter, bro. Like you really hating right now. 
Hater alert. Hater alert. Hater alert. Nigga just mad. He didn't get toys. <laughs> Even when he tells Herschel that Lori's pregnant, he still tells him they have to just find somewhere else to stay. And I'm not gonna lie, bro, I'd have to screw up with Herschel, bro, because you got me fucked up, bro. But not only that, after Glenn and his daughter got busy inside the abandoned 7-Eleven, Glenn accidentally stumbles across a herd full of zombies that Herschel kept hidden inside of his own barn. And the reason for this is because Herschel feels like these walkers are really just sick people. Like this nigga really thinks that they got COVID or something. And this creates conflict between Herschel and the group. And now everybody is unhinged, especially Shane. But Rick tries to get him to relax and abide by Herschel's rule to leave the walkers alone. And when Shane disagrees, Rick tells him that Lori is pregnant and that they have to stay here for the baby, no matter what. And so Herschel takes Rick to help him with something. And while they're doing this, Shane is trying to talk to Lori about the baby. And he's telling her, bro, like, you know we've been getting busy. Like, you know that baby mine for real. And she tells that nigga, bro, this baby is not yours and it will never be yours. Even if it is biologically yours, it will never be yours. And I'm not going to lie, this flipped the switch into Shane, bro, because now he's just pissed, bro. He's not only pissed about the baby situation, but he's also heated up about the barn situation as well. And so he starts passing everybody out guns, which Herschel explicitly did not want. And speaking of Herschel, Rick and Herschel get back and these two niggas have two walkers on a leash like they're some fucking dogs and Herschel was trying to put them inside the barn and now this dude Shane has lost it bro he starts turning up bro man let me ask you something the living breathing person did they walk away from this stop three rounds in the chest why is it still coming why is it still coming now if y'all want to live if you want to survive you gotta fight for it I'm talking about fight Right here! Right now! And he breaks open the barn doors and all the walkers start to come out and they all get gunned down. I'm talking pew 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 pew. And then they hear one more walker coming out. But oh my goodness, bro. If this isn't the plot twist of plot twist, bro. The little girl they've been looking for this entire time walks out of this damn barn bro and she herself has become a walker bro so all this time they've been chasing this ghost bro and this hits harder for rick than anybody else bro because he already felt responsible for sophia getting lost in the first place and now he feels like he's just been wasting time having everybody search for this little girl when she's clearly been gone this entire time Herschel is distraught, man. This dude is heartbroken for real because to him, he felt like the walkers were still alive. And so to him, it felt like he just watched his entire family get gunned down. Not sure if I mentioned that, but yes, the walkers inside of his barn was his deceased family. And so now Herschel is at this bar. My man is depressed and shit. And Rick is trying to talk to him. He's trying to get him to come back home. But as they're talking, they get interrupted by these two strangers. And they come in and they chat it up. And they tell Rick and them that they have a group of their own. And that they need a place to shelter. But Rick steps up and tells them that they don't have enough room. And it's not really a good time to be accepting new people. And so the fat one gets mad. And he threatens to shoot them all and take their barn for themselves. But now you fucked up, bro. Because you just threatened Rick's family, bro. And you don't do that. And this is why I call this man Cowboy Rick man because that nigga had that quick draw in hall of fame and my boy rick got his first ever live kill man. and he starts to become a whole nother person now while all this is going on shane is trying to talk to Lori and tell her that rick doesn't know what he's doing and that he can't survive in this world and i'm not gonna lie this dude shane is really a l man's frill because he's really trying to talk down on his bro all for a family that's not even his i don't understand why you even did this to yourself this made you look so fucking stupid this shit make you look so stupid and she confronts him about what really happened with Otis. And he tells her the truth about it. And so the next day, Lori tells Rick that Shane has completely lost his marbles. And that he feels like Lori, Carl, and the baby all belong to him. And I don't know what it is, bro. But, like, the way she explained it to him, bro. Like, she sounded, like, real evil for real, bro. Like, deceitful almost. Like, like just listen how she tells this dude. Shane thinks I'm his. He thinks the baby's his. And he says you can't. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. And my boy Rick really standing on business. He confronted Shane. And I ain't gonna lie, he's talking to that nigga Shane crazy. That nigga's like, I know what happened between you and Lori. When I figured it out, and I figured it out pretty quickly, I wanted to break your jaw, let you choke on your teeth. Like, damn. But I feel him 100% though. Like, nigga, you got me fucked up. And he told him, bro, like, listen, this is my family, bro. This is my wife, my son. 
my seed. It's like, no. But for real, though, he's really telling them, like, this is my family, bro. Like, you can't have my family, all right? I understand what y'all went through, but you can't have my family, straight up. Now, I just want to rewind for just a moment back to the bar scene. After Rick killed these two men, a couple more people from their group show up. And once they see that their men aren't responding, Rick tries to explain to them what happened. And after hearing this, they start shooting up the place. And this was a bright idea because now they've just attracted a shit ton of walkers. And the stranger's group starts to leave, but one of their men gets left behind and his name is Randall. And the group ties him up and leaves him in the barn until they figure out what to do with him. And so now we're all the way back at the point where Rick confronts Shane. And so Shane and Rick head out to a discreet location so they can drop Randall off and leave him be. But their plan changes once he tells them that he knows Maggie. And before Rick can even think of what to do, Shane tries to shoot this nigga Randall, bro. Shane is not playing right now. But Rick stops him and the two start arguing once again. And Shane tells him that he doesn't have what it takes to protect his family. And I'm trying to tell y'all, bro, y'all better stop talking about this dude's family, bro, because he don't play. And I ain't gonna lie, this dude Rick starts mixing this dude Shane. And as these niggas are fighting, this nigga Shane gets pissed because Rick really putting the hands to that nigga. This nigga grabs a wrench and launches it at Rick and it busts open the window behind him and it woke up the walkers all inside of there. And Rick had a chance to leave Shane behind. But Rick is a real ass nigga though, bro. And he comes back to save Shane. And you can see this nigga Rick is trying to keep the friendship alive, bro. Like he doesn't want to just leave his homie Shane behind, you feel me? And so the group gets back and they all have a discussion about Randall. And Rick ultimately decides to spare his life. But Shane is not happy with this. And so he goes in the barn, he starts tweaking out a little bit and he takes Randall away. You're gonna like it with us. Can't say it's about me, just trying to... Ah! And Rick and everybody else notices that Randall is missing. And then we see Shane coming out of the woods with a bloody nose. And he tells him that Randall has snuck him and took his gun and ran away. And so now Rick and Shane and Glenn and Daryl go to look for Randall. And as Daryl and Glenn are looking, they notice a walker, but they notice that this walker is Randall. And as Rick is walking, he notices that something is off and he knows that Shane is up to no good. And he calls him out on it and Shane has his gun raised to Rick and tells him that he set this whole thing up so that he can get Rick out here all by himself. And Rick is really talking to this dude. He's like, nigga, you want to sleep with my wife, nigga? You want my kids to call you daddy, nigga? Is that really what you want, bro? And he tells Shane that they can still come back from this and that they can still go back to the barn together. And they go back to the barn together and they tell everybody it was a misunderstanding. That man Rick did what he had to do, man. Like, there's no other way to say it. And this scene is fucked up, man. You don't ever want to have to be put in that situation where you have to really go against your dog like that. But just when we thought things was over, Carl shows up at the last second and seen what Rick did to Shane. And when Rick tries to explain to him what's going on, Carl put his own dad at gunpoint, bro. Like, this is crazy. But Rick doesn't notice that Shane already turned into a walker. And Carl shoots him before he gets Rick. W timing, W timing. And as they're heading back to the farm, they notice a herd of walkers heading straight for the barn. And Rick and Carl get there first and starts a giant fire to distract the walkers so everybody can escape. And we see everybody at the barn coming out to see what's going on. And I ain't gonna lie, things are getting hectic, bro. Like, we see niggas shooting, bro. Like, I'm not gonna lie, even Hersher out there with the buckshot, bro. He got infinite ammo. Boom! Boom! He hitting him with that 200 pump. And everybody gets away one way or the other. Except for Andrea. I mean, she gets left behind. But don't worry, y'all. Someone comes along and saves her life. I ain't gonna lie, man. Shawty's like a black samurai, man. I ain't gonna lie. She fired. She fired. And we see everybody else huddle up. And Rick is really pissed off now, bro, because he's done went through everything. This dude lost Sophia. This dude had to kill some real people. He had to watch his own son get shot. And to top everything all off, his best friend was trying to take his family from him. And he had to kill him. Like, Rick is really going through it right now, bro. And everybody is still trying to ask him for answers. Do something. I am doing something. I'm keeping this group together, alive. Maybe you people are better off without me. Go ahead. Go on, there's the door. No takers? Fine. We get one thing straight. This isn't a democracy anymore. And with that being said, Rick declares himself as the definitive leader of this group. And as you can see, this is a completely different Rick than what we've seen before. I mean, he don't be on no bullshit trying to control anybody, but he's just not going for no more games. And he's going to keep this group safe no matter what. And that's going to be it for season two, man. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, man, things are going to just keep getting crazier, bro, because this is only the beginning for real. Like, this is just the tip of the iceberg. So stay tuned, y'all. Make sure y'all subscribe, like, comment, and share, bro. Make sure y'all, you know, tap in and comment down below what shows y'all want, bro. I need y'all to let me know.
wait 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 hold on hold on before you guys click up the video and get to typing what about the secret that dr jenner told rick man did y'all honestly think i was gonna forget to tell you okay i did i did but that don't mean nothing bro that's neither here or there the secret that dr jenner told rick is that they're all basically fucked Bruh. and that this virus is airborne and there's nothing they can do about it so yeah okay bye